Okay, so moving on to the fourth LP in our little rundown of 10 Essential Studio One LPs. Number four, we've got Flash Forward, Cedric M. Brooks. Cedric was a virtuoso sax player, also played other wind instruments as well. A real stalwart of the Studio One stable. You can hear him on a lot of particularly the Roots era recordings. Um, and he did actually his own solo instrumental cuts of a lot of the heavy rhythms of the time, early, mid, late 70s. And this LP really is a collection of mostly versions of other heavy rhythms from Studio One. So usually you can find an original cut that this will be a version of any tune of this LP, apart from one or two. So this is this is kind of a collection of versions that he did of other people's tunes coming out of Studio One. Cedric seemed to have great taste in the things that he re licked, always really deep, heavy tunes. I guess those are the ones that he chose himself. The selection probably came from him, I would have thought. So this cover that I'm showing you now actually only comes on the later presses. The first press of this LP with the first mix just comes in a plain white cover, as a lot of Studio One LPs did at the time. They didn't get the cover together till a bit later. So this cover is actually from an early 90s issue which is still the first mix of the LP. I'm going to talk about the mixes later on. There's two different mixes, one of them very little known. But this is the more common mix. Actually, this is a repress from the 90s, and the original Jamaican LP had an extra track on it that this doesn't have, which I'm going to cover in a minute. So let's have a look at what's on the LP. I love the back of this LP, real nice 70s vibe to that decoration there, nice artwork with the thunder and lightning uh, hitting the music. <laughs> yeah, it comes with a great a little bit of reggae journalism on the back there, little description of the music, picking up Cedric and his works, next by someone that I've never heard of actually, uh, Marina Record, not sure who exactly she was, but they got her to write a little uh, rundown on the sleeve there. So the album kicks off with Glory to Sound, which is a typical kind of rabble-rousing Studio One, a kind of up full instrumental with blazing horns, major key kind of thing, not so much up my street, but definitely a massive tune for some people. Yeah, it was a big one back in the day, I think, that. Number two, we've got Give Rasta Glory. This is the real one-away tune of the whole LP for me. Just the musical extravaganza, Cedric going wild on the sax. It's a real funky, funky Studio One rhythm, this. Really one of the heaviest things that they ever put out in my eyes. Both funky and rootsy at the same time. Cedric goes on a wild, wild musical journey on this one. Real one-away funky rhythm from Studio One. It's not a cut to anything. There's no other pieces of it out there. And yeah, this is worth the entrance of the LP alone. Just this tune. Blow most people away. Tune of the LP for me. Next, listed on this LP next, you've got number three, Father Forgive, which is a sore point because it's actually not on this pressing. The pressing that comes with this cover does not have this tune on it. It's actually a cut to Declaration of Rights, the Abyssinians, which is a must, must, must listen if you don't know that. Uh, please go and look that up now if you don't know it. The original Studio One cut, Declaration of Rights. And this is a beautiful sax version of it, which I've ended up actually picking up on a Soul Jazz LP. I'm afraid I can't remember which one offhand, but it's there. Father Forgive, they put it out on one of their compilations, which is a bit of a godsend, really, because as I say, it was only it was only included on the first Jamaican press of Flash Forward, which is very hard to find. I haven't got it on the original myself. I'm rocking a 90s repress here myself, although I do have a different mix, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. So yeah, Father Forgive not present on this. But what is there and isn't listed is a track called Right On Rasta, which is a version of Beat Down Babylon, Freddie McGregor, the Studio One cut to the Junior Biles tune, which he cut for the upsetter. And this Beat Down Babylon, the Freddie McGregor version is killer. That, that got repressed somewhere or the other. I think it was a Peckings LP. They put it out on one of their Peckings presses, which we'll talk about elsewhere on the channel at some point. But yeah, Right On Rasta is a sax and bongo cut, uh, I believe alongside Count Ozzy uh, joins Cedric 
on the bongos for this one uh, and it's a really heavy heavy tune if you want to know more about this rhythm you could look up peace in the land honey boy a rare rare one away cut on banana seven inch put out by junior lincoln you can find that on my website selectiontrain.com i've talked about that 45 one of my personal all-time favorites peace in the land and that's on the same rhythm as this this version right on Rasta comes on the flip side of the Freddie McGregor on a seven, also on the flip side of the DJ cut, all of those on iron side, seven inch put out by Coxon back in the day. So really the pedigree of that tune, really heavy one to have in your collection. So a great, great addition to this LP. Uh, walking through the door, that's a sax cut to Alton Ellis, knocking at my door which is a great, great tune. I used to have it on my site, but got taken down for copyright reasons. And I think that's probably been repressed somewhere recently, uh, hence the copyright strike. Maybe Yep Rock put it out, I guess. Um, yeah, a deep, deep tune, when you know the vocal, even better. And that goes again for Freeman, track number five, is a version of Born a Freeman, Al and Freddy. It took me years and years to find that tune. There's a series released on the Fab label, but actually not even labelled, released by the Fab label on blank, seven inches in the UK. Very, very rare Studio One music. Uh, there's a few of them that are highly, highly sought after. Born a Free Man, Alan Freddy, being Al Campbell and Freddie McGregor, called Alf and Teep or something strange on the Fab publicity of the time. But yeah, I'm a free man to one of the all-time Studio One Roots killers. Massively up for beautiful tune. I believe that's about to be repressed by Yep Rock on some compilation or other. And then also pressed by Rocker Shaka, I think it is, on an LP that they're apparently calling Pirate's Choice Volume 2, which is interesting in the light of the Pirate's Choice LP that we've covered here in this list already. Now, they're, I think what they're getting at is that Yep Rock are the pirates, since they're both putting out similar music at the moment. We might go into that controversy in another video soon. I'm not going to waste too much time about it. But just know that there are competing people pressing Studio One music at the moment, and it is quite controversial. It's ended up with them putting out very similar track-listed LPs and directly competing with each other, which we may look at at some point, but not right now. So, number six, we've got Right Time. I recently rediscovered this um, incredible tune. I think this is a one-off. I've never heard another version of it. It's just one of Cedric's personal uh, compositions. And, yeah, uh, um, you have to hear that to, to know it really. Up full, deep roots. Out of the others that we've got left, Idleberg is a deadly, deadly cut to Skylarkin. As they dubbed up, I think, on Dread Dub Store Special Dub LP. I think that's the one. And that's got a deadly dub of this particular cut. So again, you can run the instrumental and the dub if you find that dub LP. And if you know Skylark in Horace Andy, obviously one of the all-time killer Studio One rhythms, relicked a hundred times. But you can't be the original in my book. Uh, number 10, Picture on the Wall. Uh, it's a version of uh, Freddie McKay, very famous Picture on the Wall, lover's lyric. Uh, but that rhythm also was used for Torture and Flames, Jackie Bernard which I hunted years again for before finding that on Fab Blank. Another one of those Fab Blank rarities, incredible tunes, Torture and Flames. And that was recently re, uh, reissued by Yep Rock on uh, Studio One from the Vaults Volume 2, which has got a fair few killers on it. I must admit, love them or hate them. Uh, I wasn't too impressed with their earlier output, but I think they really did do a good job on that. So... Anything, any labels that repress the unreleased music, that's what I'd be doing. They're good in my book. Dig deep for those tapes. That's what I would say. Um, everyone knows Studio One, Big Tunes. No one reads the reissue, Armageddon Time, Willie Williams again. Soul Jazz, I'm talking to you. Yeah, but I must admit, Soul Jazz have done their share. They have put out some some deep unreleased music, which is what it all what it's all about, really. The Cox and catalogue goes on forever and there's undoubtedly many unreleased gems or very very rare gems that are impossible to find on vinyl so yeah you're getting a, a again on this the last track on this lp is a sax cut of that rhythm torture and flames another one to play side by side to, with the original really nice to have this whole collection of cedric he really is a genius and all of his cuts are deadly so to have him blowing on this kind of caliber of rhythm 
you definitely can't pass this LP up. Definitely in the top 10 of all time Studio One LPs. So yeah, again, I'm just going to break down a little bit of information about different pressings of this LP. Again, it was a very popular one, so it has been pressed a few times. This version with the cover, I think the earliest press that this cover comes with is this one. I bought it in the early 90s, I think it's from that time. And unusually for the 90s, which often had really poor pressings, this is on very heavy vinyl, and it's actually a very nice pressing. It doesn't sound bad at all. Quite clear, very heavy bass. I can't really fault it. This is one of the better represses. So well worth looking for it on this particular iteration of the uh, Studio One label, if you can find it. Goes for a little bit these days, even though this is a repress, still quite hard to find. There is an earlier press, black and white Studio One, with more kind of classic lettering, more like you find on the Jamaican 7 inches, which does have the Father Forgive track I mentioned, Declaration of Rights version. If you really must have the original version of everything, then that's the one to go for. But you're looking for, you're looking at money these days, £100 upwards, I'd say. You're not going to find that very easily, as I still haven't found it myself, in fact. But interestingly, I've actually unearthed a, a version of this LP that doesn't seem to be documented. I know Rob Chapman, who I've, who I've mentioned before, at Downbeat Special website, great chronicler of a lot of Studio One information, he wasn't actually aware of this press of the LP, so I think he's got some information about different presses of Flash Forward, but he didn't know about this one, which is unusual. He's a, he's a heavy digger. So this one that I'm showing you now is it's a similar label. They use this label for a lot of 12 inches that they couldn't be bothered to press up uh, labels for, and they used to just put them out on a blank and let you scribble your own titles. And this is a version of the same LP, but with overdubs. And this is one of those cases where the overdubs just make the music more heavy. People might disagree with that. A lot of people who've grown up listening to that Cedric Brooks in the original mix might completely slate me for saying that. Feel free to do so in the comments. I like a good discussion, a bit of debate. It never goes down badly with me. So, yeah, uh, you might disagree. But if you hear Give Rasta Glory with its steppers hard drums that they've put on this cut on this LP, you'll be shocked. If you know the music and you don't know this version of it, it's well worth seeking this out. Although I must say it must be pretty rare if Rob doesn't know it and not many people I know have ever heard it. But, you know, the Born a Free Man cut has got overdubs, hard drum overdubs, no Pigeon Street business, no boo 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 It's just, uh, it just makes it more steppers. The Give Rast the Glory, it makes it into a steppers extravaganza. It was already a deadly tune, but with this mix... Uh, really heavy. I mean, it's it's a bit of a strange stereo mix with more volume in one channel and the drums panned a bit weird, but you play this this, L, this cut of the LP loud with all those cuts all remixed in a heavy, heavy fashion. Uh, this is a really serious find. I couldn't believe it. I thought I was buying the first mix. I ordered this off at eBay 10 years ago or something, and it arrived and I touched the first tune, Give Rast the Glory, and it had this incredible steppers overdub. I couldn't believe it. Um, so for me, this is a real gem in my collection uh, to have found it in a different style, more my style than the original, when the original is already uh, an all-time great. So yeah, uh, find yourself a copy of this. If you like Studio One, you can't go wrong with this one. Okay, people, please like and subscribe, but don't forget to catch the next video, number five in our Essential LPs Roundup. See you on the other side.